Good morning, YouTube. It's Sugar. I am going to be back here with another video. I know it's been a while since you guys seen me, so I'm going to give you guys a quick update. And I guess y'all guys can clean my apartment with me because it looks a mess. Like, a mess, a mess. And there's my stank boy. Say hi, YouTube. But, yeah. It's been a while since you guys seen me. And, y'all, give me a break with these braids. I know they look crazy, but I'm going to turn these hoes to some pull-ups, okay? But I just woke up. My eyes is crusty. Rough thing. Literally just rolled out of bed. I'm going to go brush my teeth, wash my face. I'm not putting no clothes on right now. So y'all going to be looking at this all day. You okay. You okay. I will. I took a shower like earlier this morning. Because for some reason, I ain't been going to sleep until about 2 o'clock. I've been up watching Naruto. And I also watched a new Medea movie on Netflix. So... Good girl been up all night. Mind your business. But yeah, just run out of bed. Let me go brush my teeth, wash my face, and update you guys. Because a lot has happened since the last time I've been on this camera. And I do want to let you guys know. Give y'all some kind of explanation of why. But yeah, I'll be back. Right after that, I found out I was pregnant. Um, A lot of emotions. I was happy for the most part because we were talking about that we wanted a kid. And we was going to tell everybody at our reception. Never made it to that point. Um, I ended up having a miscarriage around the 26th, 27th of January. And it's February 26th now. February 26th. I just needed time to process. On top of that, like with the miscarriage, the happy point of that what took away from that sorrow and stuff was the fact that I got married on February 2nd on our five year anniversary with the February 4th which was our reception I, I did enjoy myself was also kind of sort of grieving because my great grandmother was put into hospice middle of January and I knew that she didn't have much longer if she was in hospice. My grandmother was a fighter. She's been basically bed bound for three, four years now. Three to four, maybe three, because no, it was, it's been four. Because when me and my husband first started dating, she was walking, she was moving around pretty fine. She even was staying in her own place. And then maybe year two, going into year three. Yeah. She, she basically just, her legs wouldn't move for her anymore. And maybe she just got tired of fighting herself to get up and move around. Her legs gave out and she's been bed bound. So she has fought for a while. She had dementia or something like that, Alzheimer's, whatever you call it. But she was strong. So... I basically got all my grieving out with the miscarriage and my grandmother because she passed February 6th early in the morning. Her um, service was February 15th. She wanted to be cremated, so we basically waiting on all of that to be settled. But she was a fighter, so I knew that even though I was sad and I was hurt because she's no longer here, I know she's happy and at peace because on earth she was suffering like you don't want to see a loved one suffer but you want them here that's kind of selfish on your part so i wasn't really i don't know how to say it. it's not that i wasn't sad that i'm not grieving because i got all my crying out at home because i knew at the service like it was just basically us coming to a realization that she's actually gone like there's this is it but I basically all my grieving out at home because I did not want to be there crying. I also have my son there, my little cousin. He's like four. I knew that if everybody else around me is falling apart, no one's going to pay attention to the kids. And they're going to be scared. They're going to be wondering, like, what's going on? So I basically held my own, like, had a frog in my throat the whole time, trying not to cry too bad. But a couple tears did, did drop. But so far life has been life in me like back to back 
but I'm okay. I'm okay. Um, we do want to have another kid. I'm still waiting to get cleared by my doctor. I'm tired of going to doctor appointments every week. But honestly, I think when I am cleared, I want to go back on birth control because I want to be in a better living situation for my family before. Get what together? They at Grandma House. He talking about TT and Jalen. <laughs> but I want to get myself together a little bit. My juice. That's his juice. We want to work on ourselves as a couple and work on basically our lifetime careers. Because I'm in school still. You guys know that. And he's working on going back to school. He don't know what he want to do yet, but he's working on it. And we pretty much keep our relationship private. We talk to each other about things that we want done. And he knows what it is. I know what it is. But we just feel like when you keep stuff to yourself and not many people know about stuff, not too many people, not too many people can shed like negativity or tell you you're not going to be able to do that or that's not a job for you. Because if they don't know about it and you making it happen on the low, when it come to the light, like, it's already going to be done. Nobody can really give you negative energy towards what you have planned or tell you that's not for you. You're not going to be able to do that. Because I've had a lot of people tell me stuff. Like, I would tell people about my plans and what I want to do. And there would be people that would, that's not for you. You're not going to make it. You're going to be out there on your own. Because negative energy. They, they just want to keep you confined to one little space where they feel like, they're superior or they have control over your decisions when it's your life like people can't live your life for you that's why i gotta clean up it's okay but <laughs> we keeping our plans to ourselves yeah we're gonna we're gonna go see them tomorrow my brother and sister stays in me not many i know that's what he's looking for because he expected him to be in a bed and they with our grandma for the weekend but with, with grandma no i do no they're not with shell they with grandma grandma lynn i do you have party i do i do but how i do 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 i I do I away. But I do I I'm pretty much okay. We do have deep conversations. He does help me. Karan, go in your room. He does help me get over like tough decisions or maybe because I have anxiety. I tend to overthink about situations that doesn't matter as much or like when I have a plan or an idea. I think about, like, my first thing is, what if our family doesn't like it? What if somebody in our family says something? What if our family, what if somebody in one of our family says something that makes you change your mind? Like, his whole plan with the truck driving thing, I understand that that's something that he didn't want to do. He was going to do it for the money. I told him, do something that makes you feel comfortable, like something that you gonna be able to get up every day and go do without having to oh, i don't want to go to this job type stuff and me i know the job i that i um working towards is something that i want to do because it's like a hobby y'all see this bed is in front of that window and it was over there over there it's, it's been all over the place this room has been flipped so many times like i got that part for the dresser because he broke my tripod but it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to give you another one. Better camera equipment too because this is my phone. But I'm going to work on what I want to work on. He's obsessed with that first aid kit, y'all. I don't know why. But I know I'm going to be able to work on something and get it done without having negative energy or negative feedback. Like, your opinion doesn't matter in my life, especially if you're not the one that got to live it. Especially with what, I, what I've been through in the past. Too many, like, I have a very small family circle. It may come down in my family that's blood related to me. Two and a half households. 
two and a half. I, um, well, I'm going to say their names. My Aunt Kim and her family, well, her, her children. My aunt and uncle, Isha and Jeffrey, are basically another family household. And I want to say my, my um, parents. My dad, he doesn't really have too much feedback, negative or positive. Like, he just basically pretty much whatever you want to do, you do. Whatever you put your mind to, you do. As long as you're doing something to better yourself. He doesn't really care. Um, I don't really get too much negative feedback from him anyway, like ever, because he's nonchalant. I don't know how I'll put it. Like, it is what it is with him. My mother, I don't know. I don't know. It could be either or with her. Like, she can support my, my wishes and dreams, but stuff that would make sense, like being here in the flesh, well, she in some flesh, but she ain't here. She ain't dead, y'all. I didn't mean to put it like that. But her mind is not all here. So it's like she's supportive to a certain point. That's why I said two and a half households. My grandmother, I guess, she's sometime in. But honestly, I feel like on the low, a lot of family members, people related to me, are, they can say congratulations to you or say I hope you get done what you're trying to get done. But they look at you with that negative look, like the evil eye, or whatever you guys call it, basically putting negative energy on you. That's why like every night I pray. Everybody be in here sleep. I be walking around the house praying. Because I don't want that negative energy in my apartment. I don't want that negative energy in my life. I try to push all that out. Because a lot of negative energy also brings you down. Like if somebody's praying on your downfall. Or they giving you the evil eye with like intent to hurt you. Or they intend to like hope your dreams don't come true. Even though they don't know what it means. Like in order for the devil to harm you. He got to know exactly what your plans are. So he can know what to work against. That's why I don't. That's why we don't let too many people in our relationship we don't let too many people know what's going on we let you know that we let you know but it's never we let you know to a certain point like you got the surface matter you don't got what's underneath the, the surface because it's none of your business honestly regardless of who you are it's none of your business and a lot of people feel like we don't ask for help when we need it or we moved out too soon stuff like that we had a plan we went with our plan we didn't let too many people know because when we did decide to move people from both sides of our family telling us that's probably not the best idea it's still maybe not going to do we're going to be back home in a year it's going on too we're fine um my point my whole thing is you're not broke as long as your bills is paid Regardless of how much money you have left after paying bills, your priorities are straight. You put your bills in your family before your wants. Like, me getting my nails done. I make sure my bills are paid first. If I got money left over, then I go get my nails done. Or just wait to the next check. So it is what it is. Like. That little girl upstairs, if y'all hear her, she be she be throwing down up here. I don't know what she doing. I think she's the only child, but she love running. But get your priorities straight. And get yourself closer to God. That's basically what I've been working on. That's what he's working on. And honestly, since we've been working on that, I don't really feel too much like negative thoughts for to say like you guys know I want to be an interior designer. That's as much as y'all know. Y'all y'all don't know that nothing else. Because it's not your business. But if I was to tell my family my plans before I started it, my wants, my desires, I don't know who in my family 
has negative and like intends to oh she's so and so daughter she's so and so granddaughter she's so and so niece wife whatever it's negative energy from anybody like it can be somebody that you've known since childhood or somebody that even gave birth to you like you never know who wants you to basically be belittled or basically nothing to compare to what they had in life or people that feel like oh it's not fair because i got pregnant at 17 had a kid and my life has been nothing because i had a lot of people tell me get an abortion you're not going to finish school you're not going to be able to do anything with yourself you're not going to have no free time you're not going to finish like stuff like that negative i didn't get an abortion i kept my kid graduated early um i'm in college a lot of people don't know that i also have an apartment that me and my husband pay for not something we're struggling month to month with but to a certain point we're good like we might not have money left over like not like money left over at all but it might not be enough to go out and party and stuff because we don't do that anyway follow me but a lot of people told me that i wasn't going to amount to anything because i was choosing to have a kid and they know who they are if they're watching this i don't give a fuck mm, i did not mean to say that i do not mean to say that but i don't care and with me people telling me that i can't do this or this is going to happen and this is going to happen and this is going to happen i like to prove people wrong and i know sometimes it does give me doubt like what if because they went through this i do end up like that but i put my mind to it it's going to get done because that's negative energy that's why i don't tell people my plans and stuff when i first found out i was pregnant i was 16 like i found out february my birthday's in march if y'all don't know but there was a whole lot of people that ain't even blood related to me some of them are but some of them wasn't my great my great grandma yeah well my great grandmother the one that passed was a teen mom i think she was or either in her 20 or early 20s my grandmother veronica my dad's mom was a teen mom she's a nurse now by the way um i think my grandmother on my mom's side was a teenager when she had her first kid which is my uncle jeffrey but she was a, a nurse not like a high excuse me not like a high ended nurse but she went to school to do something to make the money to make sure she made stuff happen so i looked at that as not like inspiration but something to follow in the footsteps in because even though i had a baby early a lot of y'all may say early but even though i had a baby at the age i did and i was still in school i finished i fought to finish i wasn't able to go to school like in person after having him because i just didn't feel like daycare was a, a good idea and i didn't want to leave him with family members because i don't know like even at 17 i didn't know which family members i could trust because there was the same family members that was always around me in my face are the ones that told me to have an abortion they want to see the baby now no if that if i didn't if i had an abortion listen to you there wouldn't have been no baby now you with my face kiki and haha and trying to hold the baby no homeschool that's what i did put your mind to stuff don't let negative energy interact because that's where a lot of my like last apartment y'all know i was not happy there this apartment i'm fine i love the place the only thing is there's no washing machine to dry hook up and there is like a laundry room mat thing on site but i'm not using that we do go to the big laundry mat down the road though it's the only thing that's wrong with this apartment only thing but i'm saying all of this to say regardless of what life throws at you regardless of negative energy from your family from your peers from your so-called friends don't let that change your mind or whatever you have planned for yourself because i'm telling you if i were to let a lot of stuff like that people said or people told me to do and then i actually followed with that or felt like what they were saying was true and went with what they were saying i would not be where i'm at today I wouldn't even be the person that I am today because a lot of that built 
on to who I am. Like, this person is all friends and friendly with me one minute. And then when I'm doing something to better myself or I'm doing something that they feel like is going to ruin my life, when they think they like to live, they got all this negative stuff to say. Pay attention to people like that because y'all, I'm telling you. They be the ones that while you working towards your plan and getting to what you trying to get to, they still down there at the bottom where they been at when they were trying to tell you that what you was trying to do wasn't what you wanted to do. Or that's something that you're not going to succeed in. Because where you at? You're going to be asking me for money one day. You're going to be asking me for help one day. And where I'm going to be? Nowhere. Nowhere to be found. Because I just... remember back in the day, I wasn't going to be able to do this. What I wanted to do wasn't going to happen. But that's my little life update, y'all. I don't know if I'm going to do a cleaning video because my apartment is trash. Okay? I ain't been cleaning. I've been cooking. But most of it is not like trash, trash. It's toys, toys, juice bottles, bags of chips, Bojangles cups. Because when I don't cook, I go out to eat. I go grab me some quick. Mind your business, mind your business. I know y'all do it too. I know you do it too. I know you do it too. But I'm going to clean, get ready for this afternoon because when my husband gets home, I love saying that y'all. But when my husband gets home, we're going grocery shopping. We're going to Sam's. If you know, you know. And then we're going to go to laundry mat wash clothes. I don't know if I'm going to take you guys with me. But I'll think about it. But that will be in the next vlog. And see you guys in the next video if I don't record it later today.